Brian with Grand Roofing, and in this video, we're going to talk about the condition of a roof, repairability of the roof, and if it should have ever been repaired, or maybe just bit the bullet and replaced it. If you're going to do a repair, let's make sure the repair is good enough to uh, last and work. So let's switch came around. I got called out to look at a leak right over here, right over here, right down there, in the valley over here, and that looks like it was just repaired. I wasn't told that. The only thing I know so far is the bit in here. What I'm sitting on is a sunroom, porch, Florida room, whatever you want to call it. Just a concrete slab, screened in, glass doors, and the corrugated foam type paneling. I don't know if there's wood on it, but let's just look around and see what we can see. And then just kind of walk over the roof and let's have a little friendly chat down below. Should it have been repaired? What's the quality of the guy doing the repair? How much should that repair cost? Everybody likes to talk about the money side of things, so yeah, I can't wait for that side. Let's just switch it around. I'll show you what I see so far. Fill you in a little bit, do a quick walk over, have a friendly little chat and a discussion in the comments down below, and let's see what we can see in this. Maybe learn a thing or two. Sorry for the monotone too, just like blown away. Really, blown away. Get in there, there's a leak right over by this, right in this area. Right down here is a header, leak right there. Just a few feet this direction, there's a leak right there. Right here, back out, we got us a repair. You could see it really nice about 10 minutes ago, but we just had a nice little golly washer run through, so I imagine there's more water running. And speaking of water running, let's look at this right here. See that? Water does flip down off a roof. There's a thing called gravity and it pulls it down. There's also something called water surface tension and capillary action, I hear people say too. So yeah, most of the water running down is gonna fall right off, but some of it wicks right back up under and let's see what we got going on under here. Oh, we got flashing, not covered at all. What happens when you got water coming flipping down up under here and runs out behind this? Well, let me refer to an old radio show I used to listen to. There used to be this guy that would call in a radio show down here in Indianapolis, which by the way, I'm in the Fishers area currently today. And a guy answer, hello, Mr. Obvious. And the guy poses a question like, hey, what happens when water comes back behind my flashing? Well, Mr. Obvious, it's gonna run right into your house, right where you're not wanting it to because it's not done right, yeah. Pretty obvious. Let's see what else we can see with this. Oh, we have a pretty fairly new chalk line. People use those to cut the lines right here of the valley. It does wash off after a little bit of time and some rain. We've had some pretty good rains over the past week or so, week or two, and it's not washed off yet. It doesn't wash away in one, but it still is a little evidence that this is a pretty good, pretty fairly new repair here. Hey, Mr. Obvious, why am I here repairing or looking at a leak repair and a repair that was just recently done? <laughs> By the way, speaking of, I said it was in the Fishers area. What do you think an area like this, uh, two-third of a square, it's not even a square, repair would cost? Because you, you all like to talk about the numbers. $500? $1,500? I mean, if it's a tube of caulk like right over here, we're going to look at it. It's at uh, $1,250, uh, 1250 $1,250 per tube. That's what I hear people say. Out to you, Kyle. <laughs> BDR, everybody making some fun about that. Uh, it's a caulking repair. Right now. Yeah, look at that. It's not even caulked up all the way. Every tube you go through, $1,250. It's under here. Just gooped in there. I don't think that's leak. This is a whole other problem. But the, the roof itself, why would this have been repaired like this and not just been talked about being replaced? Let's finish up from where we were here. We got a keyway right here in the valley. Got a keyway right here. Let's see what we got going up under here. Oh my goodness. We got us a piece of flashing right here sloping down. It's kind of pressed down into here. Can you see it? What happens when you mix a slope down and you put water in there? It's a water slide going in behind your flashing. So that water flowing down to the keyway, see it flowing into this keyway, seeping, water surface tension. Probably flowing back up under some of that, I would reckon. Just not a good area. I highly doubt these keyways were cut and nipped, because nobody ever does that. It might take an extra minute or two to do, surely. Nope, not done. Let's look at tie-in sections. Look at the amount of granule creasing going on here, because they threw it under. Yeah, let's look at this other repair. There's another repair right over here, too. The overall condition of the roof. I mean, look at this thing. Should this have been repaired? Not just this, but just the roof, the roof in general. Look at the amount of granule loss. We got asphalt fiberglass showing, getting thinner and thinner by the day. Probably due to some mechanical damage during the install and it just got worse over time because the sun degrades the asphalt. That's why the shingle granules are up there. Give it a nice little curb appeal and protect your asphalt. Let's look at this over here. Oh, I see a nice big crease right here and the shingle's raised up. Yep, typical common repair. They just are real sloppy, and they don't even have the cellophane. They come off the wrong side and stuck to the uh, the tar, which is never going to seal. But we got us a hand nail, so they did this with a hand nail. But hey, guess what? Because it's a hand nail, it means it's going to be a great repair. See how it's sticking up at an angle? Let's talk about that. 
I get comments quite a bit here the past couple weeks. I've had a lot of people reference uh, and even emails like, hey, I'm going to have this guy. He's going to charge more, but he's going to do a good job, guarantee a good job, and pound it all on by hand nails. If the people installing it care about their quality, yes. But just because it's getting put on by hand nails doesn't mean it's going to be good. You can smack too hard and crack a shingle. You can bust a piece of wood. You can underdrive it. Speaking of underdriven, underdriven hand nail right here. Doesn't mean you're going to get a good job. Sorry for the sarcasm, I just, I see this all the time. I'm like, blows me away, but let's share what we can share here. So to answer your question, the guys installing with hand nails, probably they're gonna hate their life because their boss is too cheap to give them a, a pneumatic gun or doesn't trust that they're gonna use the tool correctly. It's all about using the tool correctly. You have an air nailer, you're cautious on how you're using it, you're cautious on your air pressure, you're cautious on where you're placing the nails. That's all a big part of it. You're using a hand nail and a hammer or a hatchet, doesn't guarantee you're going to get a job. As that old adage, that old saying, just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. Same with a hand nail. Hopefully that answers some of your guys' questions if you still watch and follow. I can't uh, reply to everyone. I do my best, but there's a lot that are coming in now. Let's look around. My opinion, the roof is old. It's older. It's not shot. But when you have leaks going on, you have damage, you have an area, you know, let's look back over here, because typically what you got when you try to tie in, I'm sure I can find some, you can see all these little crease marks here. We, sh we saw that one right there before I went off on a rant about a hand nail. We got a broken shingle right here. Let's see what we got under here. You, know, you, you can see right through. So water's flowing through that. Got hand nail, and look what we got. We got us a big old tear in the shingle right here. Can you see that lifting up? And it follows all the way over here, this dirty water trail, water coming in. Well, guess what? It's going right under this, and it's probably going right in under this repair. Little side note on the repair. Somebody's been out here and did a repair and probably charged Buku bucks. I'm here somewhat fairly recently after, and I don't know that I want to touch it unless I'm doing this whole section or the whole job, because what happens now that I put my name on this? Water's pouring in here, and I didn't even touch the section because the guy before me was too incompetent. But hey, guess what? He used a hand nail and a hammer, and it's a perfect job. Sorry for the sarcasm, I just, that's how I get through my days most of the day and I bring you along with me. Let's look up a little higher. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can see it's just granule loss, creasing and tearing because of the repairability of it. Just get a new roof. Let's see what else we can see here. Bingo, found something. This is another common nail placement, nail placement, nail placement. And galvanized nail, never gonna rust, never gonna back out, no, never gonna let you down. Here's another one. See it right in there? Uh, you should not be able to do this. It's galvanized, but over time, water runs in. It's gonna waller it out. You got a, you got a nice little penetration area for water to hit right in. Not good. No extended corners. Let's see what else we can see here. Do a quick walk over this. Here's a good prime example of not an extended corner and they just slice it and fold it down, but you're relying solely on caulking when you could have the accordion style flashing or just simply extend it down slightly, bend a little corner to it. More nails loose and pulling up. Shouldn't be able to pull them up with your finger like that. Got a hole in it. Another nail right there. In an area you have water running down, really bad idea to put nails in those areas. Same with flashing. See that piece of step flashing right there? Not a good idea to put it anywhere near that crease. And furthermore, we don't ever put it out over at the bottom edge. We try to keep it on the high side. Some people want to shoot the bottom so it stays pinned down, but if you do it good and you pin it down, you push it in, it's not in a bind, it's going to stay down. Furthermore, on step flashing, this is the older 5x5 mil finish flashing. You bend it and it's not right for the right size. Of course, this is an older metro, uh, American size shingle, so five inch. When you go to the five and five eighths, this is too small to sufficiently lap between pieces, so make sure you get the right size. Mortar seen better days. <clears throat> Holy cow, I just saw a good doozy one right here. Check this out. <sighs> I've seen it on the internet like that before. Doesn't necessarily mean it's right. I've had people comment before on shorts I've done about this, and they're like, well, hey, I don't understand because it, you know, obviously it's not done right, but I don't know what you're talking about. So when this is done, it looks like the pole is replaced to me. Yes, it does. We'll look at that here in a minute. But when this is done, this top side needs to be tucked under shingles so as water pours down your roof, it goes on top of a flange. If it's just simply screwed to your roof, it can come in right here and go under it. If they never caulked it, which you got a little tear developing right here, it looks like. Water can go under. And better yet, here's another good thing. You caulked this boot to the shingle. Yes, that's going to stop it for the rest of its life. Not 
But look at the keyway right here. You got an area where water's simply gonna go right up under, surface tension, run down, hit this nail, hit this nail, hit this nail. Another little invitation for water to come in this keyway, bypassing the caulking, the grade A caulking job they did, because it's going right under the shingle now and getting into these. This is gonna pose a problem over time. It does look new, it's been replaced. I don't know anything about the local regulation codes. Who did it? Looks like it's been replaced. Typically when they do, we're looking for a tree that had been down sometime. I don't know what the cone is marking. Uh, looks like right over here may have been a tree in the past year or two that possibly blew down. Could have taken it down, but nevertheless, that's just not how that goes. So a little walkthrough. You want to tuck your boots. Let's see what else we can see real quick on this. I had to stop because we got poured on. Oh, we got some really good masonry going on here. This needs to be addressed. Should be addressed. I mean, half the brick is actually gone. It's through the little locking mortary pieces, whatever you call it. I'm not a mortar mason guy, but I can probably push through this side and poke a hole through that. Not in good shape. This needs to have something done or addressed. Ooh, looks like cannons hitting it. Oh, we're soaking wet. My knees are wet. I'm getting annoyed. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Just, it's getting old. Again, it's not shot. I'm not saying it's shot, but the repairability. My opinion, I would have been like, hey, Mr. Homeowner, I'd really recommend getting it replaced. You're getting down there on time. Inflation's on the rise. Get it done now. Two years from now, you'll be thanking me. Or you'll be paying a lot more. Or worse, you pay for a repair, and then you'd be paying another guy to come right back and do it. So, yeah. By the way, I saw that in my, my eye there. Let's go check this out. Because, you know, there's no sponsors of the channel. I don't need any sponsors of the channel. I just share what I share with you guys. Hopefully it benefits you and helps you. But this is actually one that's rather good, is the ladder standoff. So let's check it out real quick. I will leave this in the link in the description down below. There is a great YouTube viewer, follower of the channel that could comment about this. I bought it, and dude, it's the best thing ever. Protects the gutters, covers the gutters, keeps your ladder from sliding out, keeps it from blowing over, just all around does good. More importantly, it's really nice because it doesn't block the whole thing like some of the old uh, uh, Warren, Wagner, whatever they're called, where they bolt onto here. You can't adjust them. You gotta take it apart, raise your extension ladder up. This simply goes in into here, and it's the top part that the ladder that always extends, so as you extend it, it goes up with it. Easy to pop out and pull in, no tools. You can shove it down lower if you need, flip them around, pull them out, whatever. She is definitely a beaut, and I appreciate the commenter, the, the viewer that commented that down below. So I'm sharing it with you guys. If you haven't checked it out, I'll leave a link down in the description down below. Check it out. At the time, I think it was under 100 bucks, 90 bucks or something on Amazon to my door. Yeah, I know y'all hate Amazon. Some people I hate it. Sometimes I hate Amazon, but hey, it's got really good stuff. So check the link out down below. So just to wrap up in closing here, the overall condition of the roof, what's your guys' thoughts? What do you think a repair like that back there should have cost? Should it even have been done? Let's have a friendly little discussion down below. I really like engaging with the comments and reading them. Some of them really make me laugh, like the Hiroshima of all roofs. That was pretty funny. I gotta get busy, people. The rain's finally let up. I gotta get out of here. Until next time, be safe, and we'll see you on the next video.